Greetings, my fellow Kerbonauts. Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Kerbal Space Program 2, Episode 9, Space Station Expansion Part 1. Next is going to be something that connects to the space station. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to send... I'll have you guys decide real quick uh, what to send. Unmanned large docking. Large, um, unman, large addition to the station, or manned temporary, um, manned, what would I call it, um, adding crew to the station. So if you don't understand what those two things mean in the top uh, left of your screen, one would be for me to, to, to add on to the station some sort of unmanned addition uh, where I'm sending up parts to add to the space station permanently using the large dock port. And then the the other one is to send up a sort of a, a, a manned mission to transfer crew to the space station. Uh, one or the other. And then, of course, I have the raffle for the name down below. So good luck. See what wins. Let's make sure I can open. Yep, so here is the space station. Perfect. It is saving. So I'll just have to remind myself to name the work space and not just the craft. So if we are... So far, what is leading is a unmanned large addition to the station. That would be a large docking port to connect to the bottom of that station with 4x RCS so that I don't flounder about like crazy. That's going to be really important. Um, so I'm trying to think of what is a reasonable payload. Like, it might be cool to have some sort of cargo bay. But I don't really like these cargo bays. I wish they opened, like, um, on both sides. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of what they look like. So what else could I add up there? I could throw up satellites, but I don't really want to because it doesn't make sense to have satellites orbiting your International Space Station. Because you'll, you could have collisions and the like. Uh, I don't need engine mounts or adapters for that matter. So I could just make it look structural, I guess, like a hub. That's probably what I would go for: is to have a hub that I can add to if it's voted on. So that it's very modular and can accommodate uh, additional structures if if people vote on that. Because one thing that you can't launch, and let me update the priority. Add a section to the space station. One thing that you can't launch, obviously, into space is like horizontal objects like this. Right? Like, because it's not aerodynamic, it's going to fall apart, it's going to go be crazy. So, if I added the trussing for a lot more, uh, you know, a lot more structures, we can sort of piece it together over time. Uh, which, eh, you know, it could be cool. So if I, if I did something like that, um, I would probably want this launched part to be... Let me see. It depends on the decouplers. Okay, so it was already the size of large. So yeah, let's add like a hub to the to the station. A very simple hub that can accommodate a lot more. Um... Oh, interesting that 4x symmetry doesn't. Oh, it kind of works here. No, it doesn't. 
So a hub with a bunch of uh, a bunch of docking ports. So that we can add a lot more in the future. And the name of this section will be called the Kellyan again. Okay. The Kellyan Probe Core. I'm making a Borg cube, I just realized. Uh, so t t this is unmanned. So one of the things we're going to need is a, a probe command module. There it is. And then, in order to control it, I'll do a reaction wheel. Uh, which is... Man, I always forget what these are. Utility. Oh, there it is. Because of how close we're going to have it, I I'm going to want some bulk here, too below this um, docking port so that <clears throat> there's space for the other docking ports not to be filled up. So this is going to be a very vertical thing, as you'll see in a second. Uh, so I think what I'll do is go to structures and have this... I want to have it be very aesthetic, but also highly functional. So I think it's going to be something like... Um, like this where it's a, a long sort of truss. Maybe wrapped in extra trussing, because that, I think, is an option. In the... Is it payload? Yeah, in the payload. So, if this is large. Oops. That back. Alright, maybe slightly stubbier than that. That's a bit too much. But that's sort of the idea. And I'll probably put these docking ports... Anything that connects to this future docking port... Uh, will, and maybe I'll have different sizes, will um, require sort of a long, same trussing design so that it doesn't collide. Oh, I can't connect down there? I disagree. I don't like how the, the lengths of these things are not, um, don't allow for easy construction. Maximum, oops. Maximum part count. You're killing me. Maybe a small cargo bay? No, a medium cargo bay? There we go. That's not so bad. Oh, really? The top put. Okay. Oh, come on. Fine. I'll just build it. Individual section. It does not like me copying and pasting and then rotating, apparently. Planes very violently. Yeah, okay. There we go. So that looks structural. Down here, we'll have the docking ports on top, bottom. I didn't mean to click that. And bottom. Uh, I'm going to do another inline wheel on the top here. And then I'll, uh, I'll get this launched up. Oh, that is another wheel. Okay, hold on. Not there. But down here. 
We'll also want a little RCS. And I'll make sure not to add six, because six really messed with me before, but add four, but have them oriented in the same directions. And then maybe RCS in the middle. I'll put the one here and one here. That should be pretty controllable. I'll need RCS fuel. Where is the center of mass on this thing? So I'll probably want to put RCS fuel near the top. So some monoprop fuel, large container. All right, where's center of mass now? Okay, that's a lot more reasonable. Nice. Then adapters on the sides to accommodate for smaller docking. So I think that would be structures, adapters from large to medium. Oh no, uh, XL to medium. Oh, wow. No, 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 not those, these. <laughs> this thing is looking uh, increasingly phallic. So instead, I'll just have this be mirrored all four. And I have the probe core, right? The probe core is this. No. Do I not have a control pod? I thought I added one. Fuel tank. What is this command pod called? The RCHLO2. Do we see that in here? In this stack? Maybe I don't. Maybe I missed that. There it is. Yeah, I definitely missed it. Okay, perfect. So, it is controllable. I mean, if I tried to launch it without that, it would be like, you can't control this because it has no computer. And, you know, duh. So this thing is going to get added. And then we just need its launch. So let's build the launch system now. So decoupler on the bottom there. I'm going to need a lot of stability. So I think the way I'm going to design this is going to look a little weird, uh, but it's for stability sake. So I think this is a large fuel. That's methane only. So what we're going to want large but short fuel. Yep, that's correct. I just realized that if this is to dock, this thing is going to be really hard to control docking wise. So, oh well. Put a labradoodle for fuel efficiency. And then... I have no idea if this, uh, my design idea is going to work, but we'll see. And four times symmetry to, does that stand off enough? Yeah, I think it does. Two solid fuel boosters. Oh, come on. There it is. Have them up as high as I can. So that the center of mass is not too ridiculous. Are there inflatable monoprop? Uh, not that I know of. I'm going to need more than four. I know my delta V... Would have been really difficult. What is the deal here? This thing just does not want to click in. There it goes. So do times eight. I'm going to have to build that from scratch. 
there's something weird going on with the the magnet collision. Yeah, as you can see. What I can do is I can use the translation tool and try to move this up that way. There. I think that's still connected to the um, to the decoupler, but I just translated it upwards. Let's hope. Fingers crossed. This might blow up and fail. We'll we'll see pretty early, pretty quickly if that's the case. Oh, that was times eight. I want times six for struts. What the heck? What, what, what is this, like underwater ballet? <laughs> what is what is this strutting? Yeah, Yoda, I agree with you. What the heck is going on? I did times eight, but look at times eight. It's like all weird. I'm going to have to probably save and load. I don't know what's going on, but this is obviously not what symmetry is. Oh, you know what it is? I know. It's because the, um, the stress, this, the, this part here is only 2x symmetry. So it's like freaking out because I'm trying to glue 8x symmetry on a 2x symmetry part. Bet, yep, that, all right. It was my fault after all, just because the way I aesthetically designed this. It, it really, really, really did not like what I was trying to ask it to do. Right, one struck down here. I like how it's saying it. My uh, delta V is like it's not calculating the uh, the solid boosters at all. All right, Kelly and probe core. is all it needs is winglets and then we'll launch it those aren't the ones is it the stabilizers yeah it's stabilizers it... away we go Trying to connect with the space station. It's going to be a day launch too, which is kind of nice. All right at sunrise. I have no idea if the space station's in the right position. Uh, it, it really isn't. So I'm going to scrub this. And wait until it's in the right position. Because otherwise we're going to play catch up for way too long. I also probably should clear out the debris so it's very obvious what I'm aiming for. Because there's a lot of debris up there that, um, that I don't necessarily need to track. In fact, you used to, and I, I'm not sure if this is the case anymore, but you used to just be able to untrack the debris and leave it in place so that you just didn't see it. So we have the Kelly and Probe Core and the Shona, which is an orbit. But I don't see a way to hide debris automatically, so I'm just going to... Um... It's not really getting destroyed, is it? I don't see this list changing in any discernible way. Is there a filter debris? Oh, there we go. It kind of still is showing me debris, though. <laughs> so that filters this stuff, but not the view stuff. Okay, well, well that's all right. I'll just have to make sure I know what the Shona is so that I can target it. Uh, I am unpaused, so that definitely wasn't the case. 
Uh, let's go to the launch, or let's control the probe core, and then wait for the Shonda to be in the right position in the sky for us to connect to it. Which is just lagging behind us a little bit. Oh, slow down, slow down. Like here. So there's the Shona that we're trying to dock with. So let's get launched. No vessel control. Uh, cause I'm out of power. So recover vessel and then launch it again. Yeah, I didn't design this with sitting on the tarmac uh, in mind. And all this is missing is the winglets. Get them added in real quick and then launch. I don't even think I need electrical, because I just won't idle on the tarmac for it not to be a problem. So it looks like a sunset launch. Nice. Oh, come on. There we go. Hey. Good. We're good to go. So this section is just a section to add more sections. Of course, there is no like science or other meaningful things to add uh, just yet. You know, that's to be added in later development, but this will be the first dock. So that's kind of the point or the first successful dock, hopefully. I did attempt a dock before, but didn't go so well. Pretty easy to tell. Pretty stable. Good thrust to weight ratio. We're really speeding along. Optimization looks rough. Yep. Yeah, they, they've already released sort of their... what they have to say about the launch. Acknowledging that it's in a rough state that needs optimization and other things as well. Right, let's start tilting more. Still a lot of solid fuel left. So we'll do a lot of our circularization on solids, I think. Which is great. Saves me the Delta B. We're almost at 70. So I'll point pretty much at horizon. We still want to do a little climbing. Yep, yeah, now we're at 70, so now we can point horizon and just, uh, get as much horizontal velocity added as possible. Yeah, we're going to be able to do a lot of circularization on solid fuels, which is great.
Is this a crude flight? It is not, no. It was voted to be unmanned. Okay, we are like circular. Oh, Jesus. All right, I'm glad I ran out of fuel because we like propelled ourselves into high orbit. Stage. Oh god. Ah. It's a jumble. And now we have the mammoth phase. Uh, once I become... Once I'm in space, it'll be a lot easier to stabilize. Look at all that debris. Oh, oh man. So the periapse is, um, is below space, but I'm heading towards apoapse, so it's, it's kind of a non-issue. So I just have to wait for us to, to enter, enter space here, and then I'll go to the apoapse and fix it. I may need to, just for my own sanity, um, figure out a way to delete the debris up here, because I uh, added a whole lot of debris. That uh, that might have actually done it. Wonderful. So my apoapse is decreasing because we're uh, dragging. We're apo dragging now. So I may want to like point up and make sure that I don't atmo drag and ruin any um, yeah let's do that I'll have to recircularize but it's fine point prograde we're almost out of yeah, we're, we're pretty much in thin atmo now. Once I'm in space, it will be a lot more balanced. I have no idea how easy this is going to be to control, trying to park with the, uh, the space station, though. That could be a real honest problem, but we'll, we'll find out. Right, let's time accelerate till we're in space. Ten kilometers to go. And I'll start pointing to maneuver. Because I know that's what I'm going to be doing next. So now we're in space, and I can warp to maneuver. Oh, actually, before I continue to warp to maneuver, let's point towards maneuver node. Because that might take a while on this big clunker. Good enough. So at this point, I'm circularizing and then raising the apoapsis um, at a higher altitude than the space station so that I can intercept the space station. So periaps anything above 150k or apple apps rather anything above 150k although what the hell maneuver node are we pointing towards game what the heck 
It just, I mean, we're in space. We're in like a stable orbit now between 36 and 77. But I don't know what the heck that was. That was weird. The maneuver node like wandered around the nav ball. I'm sure I did it, but that's fine. All right, let's keep raising the apple apps. So 150, probably around 200k. Yep, there we go. Select the shown as a target. And now we can start um, managing an intercept to try to dock now that it's a targetable thing. Because that was the issue that I had before was the first space station that I put up didn't have a probe core, so it couldn't be targeted. And that was a whole lot of problems. So here is a intercept, a, a sort of close intercept. I'm not entirely sure how to see the distance between objects um, in this version. But those two dots, trying to get them as overlaid as possible. And then we'll get close enough for me to then run a intercept course and then eventually a docking course. So I think that's the maneuver I want, which is very little delta V. So let's point towards maneuver and then time accelerate. And I'm also going to quick save now just in case of failure. So around here, we have an intercept. I think this is what this says. I haven't done uh, docking in KSP2 yet. So some of the symb symbols are uh, slightly foreign to me. So I'm going to time warp to this point. I think this is when we're going to intercept. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I can see that we're awfully close. Okay. So how far am I away from the Shona? Where is the Shona? It is 29 kilometers away. That's not too bad. So I'm going to create another maneuver um, up ahead to try to match its orbit even closer. So once we're at the closest point, I'm going to create another maneuver to try to match its orbit and then go in for the best possible docking that I can. There's just so many rings here of debris that it's very difficult for me to figure out what I'm targeting. And uh, I am inexperienced enough n not to know how to remove those like annoying debris tracking. I would know how to do it in the original game, but I don't know how to do it here. But it's fine. I, th I think we have an intercept course that puts us like very close to one another. Nice. So warping the maneuver. Kerbin looks more Earth-like. Yeah, I, I agree. It does look a lot more Earth-like than in the original game. I think it's like just the higher graphics. I think it was just a graphical thing that it looked like a, a dull blue dot before. I'm going to fire up a little early. Right, 
So if I'm not mistaken, we should be drifting closer to one another now? As a time accelerate? No, it's further. Hmm. Oh, because of the lap intercepts. I see. This is one orbit, and the next orbit is a different lap. Alrighty then. So I'm going to create another maneuver here and try to pull my orbit to match. It's a lot closer. I think what I need to do is like save and load to get rid of all this debris because I can't I can't visualize. I have no idea which which of these rings is the Shona. It's really stupid how this is uh, displayed. It's displayed in such a impossible to interpret way. So um, I'm going to uh, quickly quit to main menu. I just saved and uh, and then load back in. Hopefully that persistent debris will be gone and I won't be tracking it. So I can actually see the ring that is the Shona and the ring that is mine and not like 15 other phantom rings that I, I don't need to know about. And I'm sure there's a way to like hide it. I just don't know the controls to hide it off the top of my head. Here's that quick save. Please, debris be gone. Fingers crossed that it is. Yes, yes. We're in business. I'm not having to look at a bunch of phantom rings now. Perfect. So now I could create a maneuver that closely matches Shona's. And then... It actually might be better if I don't yet, and I try to create a maneuver way out here as a, uh, as like a docking maneuver. I think what I'll do is I'll raise my Apple apps on next pass, and then create an intercept. That would be the proper way to do it, and I'll just go the proper way now that I can see what the hell I'm doing. Because... I, there's only two rings now, which is so much, so much easier. Well, it says I'm out of fuel, but it also says I have fuel. I don't really get the staging is weird. The other thing I have to worry about is if I don't fire up my engines uh, periodically, it drains power. And because I don't have solar panels, thinking that I wouldn't idle too long, uh, that is a concern. So I have to periodically fire up the mammoth engines just to generate power for the probe core. So now I can create a maneuver plan uh, with Shona as the target to try to get an intercept with the Shona where I can then try to go for a dock. So we're looking for the I, the twos or ones to be in line with one another. The other thing that I might need to do is to um, is to fire up the engines just to burn a little or so in this case we have um our planes don't really align perfectly so my next maneuver will be an alignment of the planes so i'm going to point towards maneuver and align our planes so that it's easier for me to intercept
So this will have us inclined at basically zero when once executed. So 0.01, that's pretty good. New maneuver plan for an intercept. And then we can drag this around. Man, we are not intercepting for a while. The, the worry that I have here is um, that our orbital periods are off by enough that... Uh, because it's ahead of me, that I need to fire prograde and speed the ship up in relation to the Shona so that I can board it sooner. Uh, normally, I would just be like, be patient and um, and orbit until our orbital periods align. But because I don't have solar panels, because I'm a dunce, uh, I don't have the luxury of time just to accelerate this probe core like that because it doesn't generate its own power without the uh, the mammoth engines kicking on. So I'll do it the uh, the quick and dirty way. And lower the periaps to like kissing the um, the atmosphere. And that way, in relation to the Shona, we are going to be speeding up. Wait, why am I... Uh, stupid... What the frick is this retrograde burning? I, I tell it to automatically point retrograde, and it was pointing prograde somehow. I mean, I caught it, but... No, oh, it's because it's just floundering. Okay, that's fine. Because I don't have enough stability. I should have time warped. So now, in relation to the Shona, we're going to be speeding up. Uh, the inclination of our planes are off by a bit again, but uh, that's not so... Oh, Jesus. So much of a concern. So now here... Uh, I can realign the planes and then aim for an intercept. So that's the next maneuver. Put us back in the same plane. And my electricity is lower than I want it to be. Seven, six, five, four, point three. That's good enough. Cut the engines. So let's try for an intercept now. I don't know how long I have power for this engine for... Thank you for tuning in to Kerbal Space Program 2, which originally streamed live on Twitch, February 25th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you'd like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream of mine. Farewell, my fellow Kerbernauts, 